Hi, yeah. Uh, my name is Peter. I'm from Oxford, England. Uh, very nice to meet you. Um, I had a fantastic trip over to Mumbai once where I actually walked out to a mosque um, which just sits into the water. And what I noticed along the mosque was that there was a lot of homeless people who were severely disfigured and most often the case was they maybe had only one leg and no arms. And coming from a Christian family where my mother used to be an, uh, a missionary nun in West Africa and my father was a missionary priest, it asked me a couple of questions around why some people are born into uh, a body which is healthy and strong and why other people are born into a body that is maybe disabled or not as um, gifted as other people. <clears throat> And that kind of led me down the spiritual path towards Falun Gong, which is based on Buddhism and Taoism. And it taught me a lot around how karma is um, from previous wrongdoings and previous lives that we've lived has an impact on this, on this life which we experience now and how we act in this uh, in, this, in, in this now moment is ultimately going to determine what happens thereafter. Um, in Islam, does it talk about anything similar? The brother asked a very good question. He said when I'm going to Bombay, he went into a mosque in the water and he saw some people disfigured, handicapped, etc. So the main question is that why are some people born healthy, some people born uh, with heart defects, some people who are born handicapped. And he gave a reply that he heard in religion, karma, in Hinduism, they say about the previous life. If, brother, I'm a student of Hinduism, and even I've read the Hindu scriptures, what you're talking about is punar janam. Punar janam, punar means next, janam means life, next life. Now, in the Hindu scriptures, the highest among the Hindu scripture is the Vedas. The Vedas speak about Punar Janam, next life, which even we believe. Even Islam believes in Punar Janam, means next life, but doesn't believe in life, death, life, death, life, death. This is called as Samskara in Sanskrit. And when the scholars of Hinduism were asked that how come some people are born handicapped, some people healthy, some people with congenital defect, they could not reply. The question is, how can God be unjust? Some people are born healthy, some people handicapped, some people are born rich family, some people poor family. So they came up with a philosophy called as samskara. Karma is action and dharma. So they came up with a philosophy that in the previous life, they did something bad, so that's the reason in this life, they are born handicapped. Correct? This is said by the Hindu scholars, not by the Vedas. My, my understanding of karma is a little bit different than that. Um, my understanding of karma is that it's actually a living entity. And it actually exists. And it exists in a different dimension which we don't necessarily see with our two so eyes. Karma is action, brother. It's not an entity. Karma is a Sanskrit word. And quite, quite often what, what we notice in when we live a very aware life, what we notice is that if we go out there and we do an action which is wrong, then that action, that will actually be turned back to us. Correct. So, so karma is action, it's not entity. Karma is the Sanskrit word which means action. Dharma is the way of life. I'm giving you the exact meaning. I'm talking about what is said in the scriptures. Your understanding may match with the scripture, may not. So karma means deeds. So because your actions were wrong, in the next life you will be born poor or maybe born handicapped. This is the thinking philosophy, which is not mentioned in the scriptures. It is said by the scholars of Hinduism, not by the highest scripture. Now coming back to the reply of Islam. Because the scholars could not come with a reply that how can God be unjust? That some are born poor, some are born rich, some are born handicapped, some are born healthy. They came with a philosophy called as samskara, death life, death life. But 
Islam has a reply for this. In Islam, you come in this world once, and this life is a test for the hereafter. As I mentioned in my talk, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Alladhi khalaqal mawta wa la hayata. Liyablakuhum. Ayyukum. Ahsanu alam amala. That God Almighty has created life and death to test which of you is good in deeds. Now, why some people are born rich, some people poor, some people are born healthy, some people handicapped. The reason is, Almighty God tests different people in different ways. The test keeps on changing. But depending upon the facility God has given you, the correction will differ. If the test paper, if the test is very difficult, the correction, normally the teacher does leniently. If the test is easy, the paper correction is tough. What we realize that Allah says in the Quran, your wealth is a test for you. If you are born rich, or if you are born in a rich family, or you are wealthy, you have to give zakat. 2.5% of your yearly saving, every lunar year, you have to give in charity. It's called a zakat. For the poor person, he doesn't have to give zakat at all. He already gets 100 out of 100. If you are poor, you don't have to give zakat. In zakat, you get 100 out of 100. We say, poor man, bichara hai. Actually, he's already passed the test. The rich people, all the rich people don't give zakat. Some may be giving, some may not be giving. Even those who are giving, they may not be giving correctly. So for the poor man, in the test of zakat, charity, he already gets 100 out of 100. For the rich man, there may be a different test. For the poor man, the test is zakat. For poor man, the test may be hijab. That how well he lives in modestly. For a person in handicap, the Quran says, the Quran says in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 28, your wealth and your children are a test for you. So for the person who's born handicapped, it may be a test for his parents. The parents are undergoing a test that if Allah gives them children who are born handicapped, do they yet believe in Allah or not? Do they yet believe in God or not? Now, whenever the test is difficult, the reward is higher. If you want to appear for a normal examination, a graduation in BA, Arts, it's easy to pass. But if you appear for a medical examination, MBBS or a MD, the moment you pass, you get a doctor's degree in front of it, doctor so-and-so. Because it's more difficult to pass a examination of medicine. Similarly, maybe Almighty God wants to reward, give a higher reward to the parents. Maybe all, all, Almighty God wants to put the parents in Janice Firdos. So they make that parents, the children, to be born as handicapped. So these are tests. Nowhere does the Quran say that a poor man will go to hell. In fact, a prophet said, it is easier for a poor man to go to paradise than... It's easier for a poor man as compared to a rich man to go to paradise. So this, brother, is a test for the hereafter. In no way is God unjust. The test paper should keep on differing. How can you have the same test every year? So depending upon the test Almighty God has given, some people born rich, some people born poor, some people healthy, some people handicapped. So depending upon the test you're undergoing, you have to appear for the examination. Whereas in Hinduism, it's illogical. It's illogical to say, you know, in Hinduism what they have, that you keep on changing. Sometimes you become a cockroach, sometimes you become a cat, sometimes you become a rat, sometimes you become an elephant. You become a human being seven times. And most sins you do, you keep on becoming lower. Today, brother, the sins in the world are increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Brother, the sins in the world are increasing or decreasing? They're, they're, in, they're increasing. Increasing. Yeah. So if sins are increasing, no. the human population should decrease. So if sins are increasing, yeah. the human population should decrease. But it and doesn't make sense. So what we realize, this philosophy is not mentioned in the Vedas. It is a philosophy given by some of the scholars, which is illogical. I disagree. In Islam, we come in this world once, and this life is a test for you. Depending upon the facility you have been given, you will undergo the test. So that doesn't mean a handicapped person will go to hell. <coughs> and we think, 
we think that the man is poor but the poor man to go to jannah is easier than a rich man so this life brother is a test for the hereafter based on the guidelines given in the quran if you pass the test to go to paradise if you fail you don't go to paradise hope that answers the question excellent i'll follow your youtube channel thank you love it thank you brother can we go to the question for uh, yes sister most welcome